Here I have the ComGo Z1 laser engraver from ComGrow. It's not as easy to say as you think. Actually, watch at the end, you'll see what a hard time I had with it. But they provided this to me to uh, demonstrate, and that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to start with some very detailed assembly and taking this out of the box, and I'll explain a few things, uh, especially if you're a beginner, you need to really pay attention to this. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I have this ComGo Z1 laser here. And I'm not going to go through the, the two different names again back to back because that was a major hassle. Little pronunciation thing. I could say the Peter Piper picked the peck of pickle peppers thing, but I couldn't say these two words together. But anyway, getting back to this laser. Uh, they provided it to me to demonstrate. And what I'm going to do here is a very detailed assembly. I'll probably make a, several videos of this. One will be the assembly, one will be how to get this all set up in uh, light burn and laser gerbil. Unless I, the assembly goes so fast that, I, that the video doesn't become too long. And then we'll do some projects and we'll see how this thing works. There's something I want to tell you right off here, especially if you're a beginner and you're not experienced with lasers. Uh, I have opened this box up, I haven't unpacked everything, but I did take out the user manual that comes with it. This is extremely brief. It is not detailed. There are a whole lot of things that are omitted from it. Now that it's well written English wise, it's not what we call English. It's easy to understand. There's a couple words in there you may throw you a little bit depending on what part of the country you're from because instead of it telling you to attach something, you fix it to it. Just like, uh, well, you might, you know, the word fix, that can mean a lot of things. Uh, it can mean repair. Uh, Maybe you're going to go fix lunch. Well, your lunch isn't broken, you're going to go make it. Here it's to attach something. So it says to fix it to the frame, it means attach it. So I'm fixing to tell you some more stuff here. That's something else from the Midwest. So there is a micro SD card inside with a little micro SD card reader. And on that card are a lot of files. Uh, Laser Gerbil is there, Lightburn is there. Although I suggest for either one of those softwares, you download it directly from the respective websites to get the latest version. There are two other manuals. There is user manual version 1.1, because the one that comes printed with the laser is version 1.0. 1.1 is greatly detailed, and I printed it out and kind of half-assed stapled it together here because it's in a booklet form. But then uh, that'll guide you through a lot of the things you may not understand. I'm very experienced at putting lasers together and using them because I have so many of them. But just to uh, give you a little heads up, either put it on a, your computer or a tablet or something and have it close by while you're assembling and it'll help you greatly with the steps. Cause, and especially when you get to the belts. And I'll go into that in detail when we assemble this because a lot of people have trouble with that. Another thing is uh, this also says user manual version 1.1. This is actually an FAQ. And that's another PDF file on there. You can print it out and it'll give you some guidance if you're having some problems. Uh, I don't foresee having any problems with this, but as a just in case, this is also a nice little thing to have. So with that said, let me get on to getting this thing out of the box. We'll see what we got. Okay, so things are a little bit messy here because I've been doing a lot of work in the shop here. We got some sawdust around that isn't going to hurt anything. I did notice when I had this open before that it is very, very well packed. So what you have in here, I'll take this out little pieces first. You got the feet here. Fortunately, there's four of them because if there wasn't, we'd have a problem. So there's the four feet, and these are not little some little plastic thing. These are well-made anodized aluminum. We got little rubber pads at the bottom. We got the uh, frame extrusions here. And there is a limit switch. It's one of the nice things about this laser, it has limits. The limit switch mounted there. Be careful you don't damage that when you're unpacking things or moving things around. So this would be the back extrusion. The front one's way down in there. Front one there, you can enhance your imagination. 
where it says here is the laser head itself. Then there is some small packages, and as I say, I've already been into this to get the micro SD card out. You have a bag with some uh, alien wrenches and a couple little stamped wrenches, and we'll go into some alternatives to that as we assemble this. Get a bag of hardware. Of course, you have USB cable, power cable. I'll also add that on the micro SD card, there are some graphics you can practice with, and some of them are pretty neat. And you get some. Uh, Little pieces of wood here look to be about four by four by a couple millimeter. Little pieces of plywood, we'll play with those later. You get the safety glasses. Uh, I am partial to using the proper color for a blue diode laser, which is actually orange. These are better than nothing. And definitely never, ever look at that laser beam with your bare eyes. Always have uh, protective eyewear on for that. This little plastic thing you'll see here is your focusing guide. And I'll explain that when we get into getting the laser head set up. So don't throw that away. Okay, the motherboard and the X axis here. It's attached by a cable. So you have to be careful taking this out. You don't damage anything. So this is all hooked together and it's supposed to be that way. There'll be a little box here. This is a power supply, I'm almost certain. Yes, it is. And that should be everything. Pick this up, make sure. Yep. That is everything that's in the box. There's not going to be a whole lot of assembly to this. So let me get rid of some stuff here and we'll get to putting this together. Okay, one of the first things you're going to want to do, and you do this on any project, is uh, unpack all the hardware to kind of inventory it and make sure you've got everything there. This does come with some tools. Um, these little, well I call them alien wrenches, but they're actually Allen wrenches or hex keys if you like. I prefer to use the ball-in drivers like this that's completely optional, it's up to you. These will work, of course. These make things easier. So what sizes are we using here? How many M&Ms we got? We got two, three, and four. So if you happen, or, yeah, two, three, and four. The four millimeter one in the middle there. So I'll be using those rather than these little L-handled hex keys. Uh, make sure all your hardware is there. I wouldn't unbag it yet until you get to the steps. Uh, a magnetic tray like this here is nice to put your hardware in and keep track of it. That's completely optional. This little sticky back guy is a, a cable harness that we'll get to here later on. And you'll want to make sure that the surface you're putting this on is absolutely clean before you stick it or it won't stay stuck very long. Voice of experience there. Spent a lot of years working in the electrical trade. And we always use these little tie, zip tie bases, or we call tie wraps. This is a zip tie. We call them tie wraps. There's a base or have a sticky back on them. If the surface is not prepared and clean, it's what we would call a peel and stick for a while base because it would fall off. These are your belts. And I'll get into these in detail because I know a lot of people have trouble getting these put on properly. So with that said, let me move some things around here. We'll start out with the frame. Okay, yeah, I've got my pieces laid out as they will, will go together for the frame. And you'll notice on the right side, you've got a limit switch. That This limit switch goes towards the front, but down. So you're going to try to assemble this thing square. Well, that limit switch down, you not only could easily damage it, it's going to be hard to keep this thing square. So what we're going to do here eventually is flip this over all the way. Your left hand extrusion has the uh, markings on it with a scale. One side has a recessed hole in it right here. The other side does not. The side that does not is a side that goes towards the front and back frames. So we're, what I'm going to do here now is flip this over and reverse it. So as not to try to confuse everybody. Again, the limit switch is at the front. I'm going to be bringing this over here. This with the scale. I'm going to flip over and put it over here. 
This is the front. It's got the ComGrow insignia on it. As you were looking at it, that would be facing you. Once you turn it over, you'll see it has four holes here on the back. These two will be for the motherboard mounting. These two are for the legs. On your back extrusion, it will be the same thing. You flip it over. The two holes in the back go to the back as it's upside down. So hopefully that doesn't confuse too many people. You just kind of line everything up here. And these are the four mounting screws. You'll need your four M&M wrench for that. Either the uh, ball end like I'm using or use the included wrenches. These just simply pass through the hole here and there is a hole in the side of this and you'll there actually there's two threaded holes there you want to go with the one on the inside here and what you want to do here is get all your screws started but do not tighten them up yet and there's a reason for that okay once you have all four of those screws just in a little bit and just sort of snug but not tight lay the frame still upside down like this with the limit switch up on a completely flat surface and this is the top of my saw table so I know it is completely flat then tighten down the four bolts that assures that you don't get anything wonky and out of square wonky is a technical term by the way now you have your frame assembled still upside down leave it that way for a bit okay next we're going to be putting the x-axis carriage on that's this right here and I have turned this around now so this is the front it's got the four holes in the extrusion your limit switch will be on your left because this is upside down and I'm going to put this together upside down for a reason as I after I slide that carriage onto these extrusions I need to be able to adjust the eccentrics on it for proper tension on the extrusion and if you don't know what that is I'll explain it here in a minute so what you want to do and this is not really difficult is just slide this right in keep your hand on there and try to get this in evenly and it will just slide on like that so what are eccentrics if you look right here let's see if I can show this closer a little better somehow right here is a nut and you, they give you a, a supplied wrench and you're going to want to adjust the nut and there's one on this side there's also one on the carriage in the middle here you want to adjust that so you don't have a bunch of slop here but you don't want it so tight that you can't turn the wheels so you want to make, have it adjusted so it glides on there well like for example this one over here is just way too loose so you, you can use the enclosed wrench they give you and by turning that little nut just a little bit one way or the other you can change that tension so you should be able to just roll that wheel with your fingers Oop, you can go the other way So what you don't want is you don't want any slop in it. So if you were to, and that would meet the limit there, that's what this is going to do over here, is that wheel, that's your limit. You want to be able to hold this, I can do this without gliding clear off, and you want it to move on its own weight, but not just go skating off of there in a hurry. And we'll have to do the same adjustment here. Uh, once we get more of this assembled. Next we're going to move on to mounting what they call the motherboard. This is a controller and I still have this upside down. I've slid the X carriage back a little ways to give me some room to work here. So you'll see that there's ears on this on each side and this will mount to the front extrusion like this. You'll have a wire out here that's actually going to go to your limit switch eventually. So you just line up these holes and using your 3M and M wrench or driver like I have here, 
Yeah, it'd be nice if these were magnetized. But there's a way around that. Little trick there. Put your finger on it, it won't fall off. I learned this little trick years, years and years and years ago because I have what they call excessive tremors. I was born with it, so you see my handshake. I was born with that. No, I don't drink too much. No, I haven't had too much coffee. And I don't have Parkinson's. It's just the way it is. I'm not the only one that has it. There's other actual other YouTubers that have it too. And Stumpy Nubs on his woodworking channel actually uh, did a video on it. So once you get that mounted, just pop it in place there. Now when you get into the feet, one side of the foot Okay, when you get into the feet, there's lefts and rights here, so they're not the same. You'll see that these are mirror images of each other. So if you would try to put this one over here, you'd never be able to figure out how to put screws in. You'd be fumbling around. This one here, one screw will line up right here. The other screw will line up into the extrusion. And I'll show you how that works. You'll be putting a little hammerhead nut on this bolt. This is called a hammerhead nut. So for the outer bolt there, you would be putting your bolt through. And if you look at this nut here, find a way to show this well. You see there's a protrusion on one side, it's a little higher than the other, and the other side's flat. That side with a little protrusion is the side that you would screw onto your bolt, just a couple turns. Just get it started on there. Then you'll want to turn that the same direction as the slot in the extrusion. That just slips down in there. You'll be popping a bolt into that open hole there. Your 3M&M &M wrench or your driver. Tighten that up a little bit. Get it halfway snug. Get everything square looking there. You don't want it crooked. Then as you tighten this up, that little hammerhead nut turns and grabs into the extrusion. So once that's set, tighten them both up. Now the other side, actually all four corners will be the same, but since we're right here at the front, we'll get this one done first. And then I'm just going to turn this around to the other side. I'll move this up here so it's out of my way. You'll also find in the package you have four of these end caps for the extrusions. They just snap right on the end here. There's a little thing in the center that goes into the center hole and little deals on the side to line up with the extrusion and those just pop in. While we have this upside down it'd be a good time to put on this little wire holder and to connect your limit switch here. You'll see that it is it's a Y limit for the Y travel which is this way. You'll see that it's keyed. It only goes in one way and there's the little keys on top, you'll see there's slots here in the limit switch. This just slips right in. You shouldn't have to force anything. It just plug right in like that. So now you've got these wires here and you've got this clip holder. I've already cleaned my base here. This little bit of rubbing alcohol. Just peel the little sticky thing off the back. Line that up on your extrusion here. Push it down good and hard. Now you can route your cable through it. I'm going around the outside of the leg here, as well as this one. And as you push this down, it'll latch in, like so. Now something I'm going to do here is use one of the zip ties. And I have more zip ties besides what they give you here. And I'm actually going to zip tie this to the leg as well over here. And that'll hold it in place good and I can cut that off. So now we can turn it back over upright. And this would be a good time to check to make sure that your x-axis carriage runs on the y-axis smoothly. Everything appears to be functioning well there. So next I'll be putting the 
belts on and this is where a lot of people get tripped up and I'm going to go into it in real detail here so you'll hopefully understand it. Okay one thing I kind of forgot about is these little nuts like right here. They are going to have to slide into the extrusion down here on the end to hold your belt. So for that reason I take my little plastic caps back off. They just pop off and then you can pop them back on. So on your belt see one side has teeth and one side's flat. The side with the teeth on it go down and you need to work this around. Hopefully I can get in here to show you this close. And over here. So I can't zoom in on that a little better. This can be a little bit fiddly because you need to go under this but you need to go over this and then back under the other one. A couple different ways you can do it. I like to catch it with my with a tool so I can bring this up, take it over Get yourself a pretty good loop there. And then just work it back down underneath again, still with the teeth side facing down. And once again, it's on the other side. Just use your tool and pop that up again. So it'll end up like this. And it should be longer than the laser frame, like so. Then you'll take one of these little flat nuts slide that in on top of the belt. It's your 3M and M driver. Put a bolt in it. Don't get right out at the very edge but you want to be down there a ways. You snug that up. Okay now how tight you need to make this belt? Well it needs to be snug but you don't want it to actually be dragging anything and don't stretch it. Don't use any tools to try to stretch it out or anything. I may not have had the camera in the right place when I did this, so I'll show you on this other one. Slip the nut in like so, and take your 3M and M wrench or driver like that. Don't put it clear out at the very outer edge. And you want to put, you want this to be tight, but not overly tight. You just want it to be snug. Then just simply tighten this down. Watch you don't deform your belt. You might have to put your fingers down in there to... Well, mine deformed anyway there. Try again. There we go. Now I need to do the same thing on this other side. Once again, the teeth go down. Just slip it underneath the wheel first wheel. So you can pop that end up. Get a hold of that. Take it over the top. Put yourself out enough of a loop so you got something to work with. And just loop it back down underneath the other wheel. Get yourself about equidistant on each end. Slip your nut in. Now you may be tempted to cut these off right away, but don't. If you need to make any adjustments, you have to have something to get a hold of. Here again, you want some tension on it, but don't make it so tight that it binds. So when you're done here, you should be able to move this. Both sides should move smoothly. Make sure your cable works on the full extension. This does just fine. And we're at the limit here, so it won't go all the way forward. Okay, there's a couple wire connections here to make. One of them since we're right here. Stepper motor. It's keyed here. You turn it, the key goes towards the frame. 
Don't force anything, it should just pop right in like that. If you bend those pins, you'll have a really hard time getting them straightened out to get this connected. You'll have the same thing on the other side, but in this case the stepper motor is up. The key here will go towards the inside again, and again it should just slip right in. You shouldn't have to force anything. And I was going to adjust the eccentric on this, but it doesn't need adjusting. That's in good shape right there. It rolls just fine. If you've got your belts in and everything, you can put your little plastic caps back on. This should go on easier the second time. See, next will be mounting the laser module itself. I've taken out of the bag here. You'll see there's a protective film over the guard here. The guard's held down with a magnet. And there's a little... Now pay attention to this. If you don't see this and don't take this off, your laser isn't going to work. There's a little sticker there that covers the lens. You have to take that off. I've had uh, one a laser from another company also does this, and I had a question, you know, about why this lights up, but the laser doesn't work. Well, take that off. Okay, there's a plastic film on here that just peels off. So for the moment, we're just going to set this off to the side. Set the laser head down. We need to take off the slider here. So there's thumb screws on both sides. If you look at the side here, there's multiple locations for being able to change the distance of your laser up and down. So that's a, a good feature there. You see there's some slots in the back. These will line up on the back of the laser module like so. I'm going to try to get you in closer for this. This out of the way. This up here. You'll need these little tiny screws and your two millimeter Allen. This is going to be a little bit hard to show, but hopefully it'll show up because it's it's black and that's always a hard thing to shoot. There's a series of holes on the back. You, I mean, you can move this around, and but you want to make sure you get lined up so that you can put all four screws in. You don't want to be trying to throw it way up here and just putting a single in or something like that. So if I get right here, there's two screw holes at the bottom I can use and there's three here at the top. Of course I'm only going to be using the outside too. So you would just start your screws. And these are tiny so be careful. Don't snug them up, just get them started. Okay, once you have all four screws started, now as you can see, you could, if the, you don't do this straight, you could have this wonky. There's that technical term again. So you want to get this straight and square. Then you can snug these up. Don't go crazy with it. Just get them tight. Okay, once that's done, look like so. Now we can put this back onto the laser. Okay, as I mentioned, there's a lot of holes here you can choose for where you want to mount this. This is what they call the focusing plate. And it goes underneath your laser with the guard on it. So you, if you put the guard on it here, actually this, that thing goes towards the back. But a little magnetic fit. You can set your focusing plate down there. And you know about where your, that's if I was going to engrave directly on this. And from there you can choose which holes you want to use for your focusing. And I could put it clear down there, but I want to be able to raise this up for perhaps some wood. So I'm going to go in with, start with the second hole here. You can always change this. very easy to change. This still allows me to go, that well, won't allow me to go down far enough. Maybe I'll go with 
Now I'm going to be doing a spoil board, so I'm going to go with the top two. So my distance of travel there, that's pretty good for what I'm going to be doing first. And as I said, it's very easy to change this later. And as we get into how I, I burn my grid and everything, I need to be able to be right down on the surface to do that. For some of the other projects, I can just pop these screws out and raise that slider back up. I like this slider focusing design. I have a couple lasers, and I'm not going to mention the brand names here, but they have a screw that will actually leave a burr on the back of the focus plate. And then if you need to be just a little off of where that was that last time, it hits that burr and it keeps wanting to change itself. So we're going to leave this right here for now. Just snug them back up. Good spot for a start. Okay, there's two cables at the top. And now you're going to need to connect the laser itself. And you have two plugs here. One says power, one says PWM. The, it's not real clear where they go, but I know where they go. The one that says power is the one that will go nearest the slider right here. And it's, it's marked power. And this is also keyed, so you don't want to force it. So it just simply slips into the first one there towards the slider. PWM also keyed, only goes in one way, don't force it. That one slips in. Then I always like to take some type of small tool and make sure that they're plugged down all the way, but don't get crazy with pushing on it. Just make sure they're in there good. Because I have had instances before where they weren't plugged in all the way. And then your laser doesn't work right. Kind of a funny little note here. I opened up light burn with the laser connected and on. Uh, of course, I have not put this in the light burn yet. And by default, it comes up with one of my other lasers. It happens to have a homing function on it. And this automatically homed, even though it's not for the right laser. That's interesting. Let me get this added in here and then uh, we'll do a little bit of testing here. Okay, I have this uh, opened up in light burn here right now and I want to do a test fire on the laser. I have it set at 1% power. I took the shield off so you'll be able to see this because it's very, very dim. But hopefully you can see there's a little bitty blue dot on the cardboard there. And I'll put a piece of this wood under there make that a little clearer. So hopefully you can see there's a little blue dot there. So we can put the shield back on. Now I'll need to set focus to uh, play with this little piece of wood. So you have this piece of acrylic and it's got some plastic covering stuff on you can peel off if you like. This is your focusing plate, so you got to get focused. So with the shield on there, loosen up our slider screws here. We'll raise this up. We'll set this in there. In a piece. Tighten the screws back up. Slide that back out. Now we're set and we're focused. I need to uh, measure this exactly and find the center of it, and we'll do a little bit of a test engrave here. Okay, so I made a little pencil mark X in the center of this one with the center of this. I'm going to start from center, just so I can see this good, so I get it lined up. Because so I don't have a grid here, so we'll fire this so I can get that right on the center there. And I can put my shield back on. And I don't know how square that is with the world because, I, like I say, I do not have a alignment grid made yet. That comes later. So we will load up one of the graphics that they supplied. Okay, this is a, a, just a little simple uh, image that they had. There were a couple little chicks. And by chicks, I mean chickens, not what you guys might be thinking. So what I want to do first here, and I shrunk it down to fit on this board, is we'll frame this. Make sure it's going to be on the board. And it is, so we'll give it a start. I'm kind of guessing here on uh, settings because I haven't done any test burns with this. But I'm running this at uh, 5,000 millimeters per minute, 90% power. So see how it'll do. 
make sure it's not cutting through, and it's not. It looks like it's engraving fine. Okay, and in watching this, since this is the, uh, the first actual burn I've done with this laser, movements are uh, very smooth. I don't see anything jumping around. Everything appears to be engraving well. As far as the actual engraving itself, I think I probably could have cut the power down a little bit. I've uh, got a little bit of scorching there. Of course, there's no air assist on this either. That's engraving just a little bit deep. I probably could have gone with uh, 60 or 70 percent power and done just fine with it. But to say, I was just kind of winging it here, going uh, from past experience with some other lasers. Of course, it could also be the wood. Um, each type of uh, material is different. Just because you have one type of wood doesn't mean the other type of wood is going to engrave the same way. This uh, looks to be like a birch, a Baltic birch plywood. If you were, if I would have been doing this on cedar, I would know that that is way too high of a setting because cedar engraves much, much quicker and it will actually burn if you uh, have power too high. So depending on what material you're using, you always need to do a test burn on some test pieces. There's a lot of grids available online in different places you can uh, get to try that out if you're a beginner. You don't want to just kind of dive in and start trying to engrave and cut without doing some tests on some scrap pieces. The shield on this does an adequate job of uh, shielding the laser beam. I would still, if you're going to stare at that, put your safety glasses on or your uh, tinted glasses or your laser glasses, I should say. And if you are doing anything at all on glass, or highly reflective materials, even with the shield on there, wear your safety goggles, laser goggles, laser glasses, whatever you want to call them, because that light will refract off that glass and scatter everywhere, and it could very easily damage your eyes. And of course, you don't want to do operate this at all if there's small children or pets around, because invariably they will want to stare at that laser beam. Okay, so I guess these weren't chickens, they're ducks. Ducklings, baby ducks. As soon as this finishes engraving, I will send this home by command, see how well it homes. I know it homed just fine on the uh, startup, even though the startup wasn't for this laser. And it comes home on its own, just like that. Here's the image we just did. As I say, there's a little bit of scorching on there. I probably could have dropped power back a little bit. But overall, uh, did a fine job. It's very accurate. All the lines are crisp and clean. So, I like it. So there's the assembly and just a little quick test and I'll be doing another video here coming up on how to get one of these set up in both laser gerbil and in light burn and I'll go into detail on how to do that and how to set up a couple projects and do some more testing and uh, a couple more demonstrations. So what do I think of this so far? It is well built. There's not a bunch of cheap plastic crap on it and I hate that when I get a laser that has got like plastic feet or plastic guards or things that are just, I mean, cheap and chintzy. So it's well built. It operates smoothly. I like the way the laser head mounts on here and how the slide is for the focus. Some of these are really, again, that technical word wonky and how you would do that and making it stay square and straight and where you want it to be and not trying to go back to some other position because there's a burr in there. I also like the fact this has limit switches on it and a homing function. Uh, it comes right back to home. It stops where it's supposed to. Uh, I know it has a tilt alarm thing on it. I haven't tested that yet, but I don't go tilting my lasers. I usually mount them all on a board, and once they're mounted on that board, there's no place for them to tilt. Uh, the work area on this is 400 millimeters square. That's 17.7 some inches if you're going to the inch system. And I'll get into that technical when I get to show you how to set this up in light burn if you're working in inches and not millimeters. So there's just uh, the first video on the assembly and everything. Uh, if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. If you'd like to get one of these ComGo lasers from ComGrow, got to be careful there. There'll be a link in the description. And once again, yes, uh, ComGrow did provide this to me to demonstrate. If you would happen to purchase one, I would get a small commission off of that, although it does not increase your costs, uh, because I am an Amazon affiliate and it helps to pay for things around here a little bit. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. I'll help the channel. Of course, we're always looking for subscribers. 
Thanks for watching. I'm Roger in the shop. Come grow, come go, laser. Got it. See you in the next one. Comgo Z1 laser engraver by Comgro. From Comgro, I have the Com Com Com. This can't be that hard. Right here, I have the Combro. Com no, that's not right either. Comgo, Comgo, not Congo. Right here, I have the Comgo. That right. Right here, I have the Comgro. Com ah. Try this again. Here I have the Comgo Z1 laser engraver from Comgro. It's not as easy to say as you think.